Welcome again on our journey through the Bible. Joseph and his story. Oh my goodness, such a great story and so much to learn. What a man of faith. Yesterday we were in chapter 41 of Genesis when Pharaoh requested that Joseph come and interpret his dreams. So he told him that his dreams were what God had planned on coming very soon. And it was going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of severe famine. And it was in the famine now. So this one in 42 is Joseph's brothers are going to Egypt now. And you remember he left him, well, to die at one point, but um, they sold him, ended up selling him. And that is why Joseph ended up in Egypt. and with Potiphar's house and now in prison and now he is head over Egypt just under Pharaoh. So Pharaoh saw and God took care of him and he prospered in everywhere he went even though he was left to die by his brothers and then or ended up being sold as a slave. So God was not going to let Joseph down. He has been a man of faith throughout all of it. And it's just amazing. I just want this much of as much faith as Joseph had all that he went through. So let's see what happens when his brothers show up. And um, let's jump right in. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there, that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, Lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him, just like he said it would happen. And their faces were down on the earth, bowed in front of him. And Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had had dreamed about them. And Joseph said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men, your servants, not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with you, our father today, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother. And you shall be kept in prison that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth to you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh, you surely are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so your words will be verified and you shall not die. 
And they did so. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. So they remembered what they had done to Joseph at that point in time, but they still didn't recognize him. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph, Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did, them, did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money, and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done for us? Then they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men. We are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me, so I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade within the land." Then it happened as they emptied their sacks that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin? All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. He's not going to let Benjamin go. Jacob will not let him go. He already lost Joseph. And Benjamin is his only full-blooded brother that is left. And now Joseph's brothers will return. We'll check it out tomorrow in chapter 43 of Genesis. It's so exciting. Oh my goodness. God. Ugh. Thank God for God. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. Chapter 43 of Genesis. Another amazing story and it continues. God bless.